welcome back to Casey's Kitchen here at Boots and Bounty Homestead. And if you checked out the video for our apple cider vinegar update, you will see in that video I explain what I'm doing here. So this is part two of the apple cider vinegar, but we are going into a new recipe. So whenever we did our apple cider vinegar, they created scobies, which are these little pancakes. <laughs> And the SCOBY stands for a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Now, if you look up SCOBY, those are used in kombucha starters. What happens is whenever you feed fruit or juice or tea with sugar, the good bacteria in those juices and teas eat the sugar and create this bacteria and yeast, um, and that's what you feed on the sugars. Well, the, the byproduct is a SCOBY, which sometimes people call them SCOBY hotels, which they get several layers of them. And that is just a collection of the good probiotics and the good bacteria and yeast that are feeding on the sugars. Therefore, fermenting, which is as the bacteria and yeast eat the sugar, it creates the gas. And so therefore, that's your fermentation. Now, not all fermentations make scobies, but occasionally it does happen. And we got lucky enough when we made our apple cider vinegar that we had a couple that started. So we removed the scobies off of the apple cider vinegar. Basically, it's just apple juice at this point that has fermented, therefore making a, a form of kombucha. But kombucha is fermented tea, and that's where we're fixing to change this into kombucha. So we took our scobies out if you guys can see them here, there's our SCOBY. I've got one and then like a partial of one. And it has about a cup of the apple cider vinegar in it. Now, if you've ever made sourdough or anything like that, you've got to have a starter. If, unless you're going to grow your own, which takes about a month. Hence the SCOBY. Because <laughs> it's been about a month since we started our apple cider vinegar. So we've actually created our own kombucha starter. So you take your SCOBY and you take a cup of the, um, the liquid from it and try not to get too many particles like the apple bits and stuff. Just try to, uh, to stick with the liquid. And from this, we're going to save it because we've got to make some tea first. And then I will show you the next step. So let's get a pot. Let's get about a half a gallon of water and the tea bags. Now you can use, as far as I know, you can use any tea. I use a combination of black and or green tea. And it, there's nothing specific. I just get the great value kind or you can get them from Dollar Tree, whatever. It doesn't matter because we're going to flavor this later. Um, well, I like mine flavored. You may not like yours flavored. I like mine flavored. Um, so we're going to do about a half a gallon of water in a pot, throw our tea bags in there, and then let it steep until it cools down enough to where we can put it in our SCOBY. So let's get that started real quick and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. So back here in my pot, I have, it's about half full of water and now black tea, which is this is just the Dollar Tree brand. It's 100% pure black tea on the back. If you want to go organic and all that stuff, you can do that. But at this point, black tea is just black tea. There are benefits to using black tea. There are benefits to using green tea, which I have here. This is also Dollar Tree brand. And you can use one or the other or both together. Now, if you want to try the black tea, which is which is what we're used to drinking, you know, regular southern sweet tea with. Um, that's called black tea. Um, you can start out with just that, if that's what you're, you know, used to drinking. And then you can slowly convert it over to green tea or half and half, whatever you want to do. I'm going to do half and half just because that's the way I've, I've graduated to making my kombucha. And... Let's see, this is a fresh box, so let me open up the bag. 
Now for a half a gallon, I do four bags of black tea, four bags of green tea. You can make it as strong as you want. Kind of play around with it and see what you like. All right, one, two, three, four. Four bags, and I'm just gonna throw them in the water. And if you want to, you can start with six bags of the green tea or six bags of the black tea, or like I'm doing here, half and half. So four and four. And I'm doing more to get more of the benefits out of the tea. Since I'm doing half and half, I'm doing four one for the other. If you're doing one solid one, you can start off with doing like six of just one, one solid tea by itself. And we're going to bring this just to before the boiling point. We don't want to boil it to destroy any of its, you know, decent good properties. But we're going to bring it right to where before it's boiling. And then cut it off, cover it, and let it steep. And before it gets too cool, we need to add a cup of sugar. Now, before anybody's like, oh, I don't intake sugar. Oh, I don't do this. I don't do that. You have to have the sugar in order to feed the bacteria and yeast. Now, that being said, I do not know about Splenda. I do not know about Stevia. I hadn't asked the, the SCOBY if it likes that kind of stuff. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know about honey either. Honey would be better than using Stevia or the Splenda or Equal or, you know, the artificial sugars. Now, I know Stevia is not artificial, but... The artificial sugars, I don't know how the SCOBY responds to it. You will have to do that your own research. Um, but for me, I'm going to add a cup of sugar to this half a gallon. Now, some of you may be thinking, oh my God, that's too sweet. It's not because the bacteria and yeast, the SCOBY part of it, is going to eat the sugar. And it's going to turn it into that gas, which gives you the carbonation that you get from a fermented tea such as kombucha so with that being said um diabetics can drink kombucha it is very healthy for them but let me throw this disclaimer in here if you have a trouble with drinking alcoholized alkalized how do you say that alcohol drinks that have that that yeast the fermented yeast in it you will not be able to drink this okay some diabetics are really, really bad that their body can't process this yeast. It's not the sugar. It's the yeast part of the sugar part of it. Does that make sense? <laughs> if you have the problem, you know what I'm talking about. But if you are, if you are a, a new diabetic or one that is not very, very bad, not like insulin dependent. Insulin dependent, I would question my physician on drinking kombuchas if you can't drink alcohol or anything like that wine beer that kind of thing um, if you can't process it you won't be able to drink the kombucha but if you are a a seasoned diabetic to where you are in control of your food and can control it you can see what this does for you okay you can talk to your physician about drinking the fermented teas and see what they suggest they may or may not know anything about a hoot you're talking about but they can also research it and kind of see now you can always start with drinking about a half a cup of it and see how your body tolerates it for a little bit okay so just be careful if you're diabetic but it is on the low glycemic index for diabetic people okay just to throw that disclaimer out there okay so we're gonna let this steep I guess I gotta turn it on for it to steep <laughs> turn it on let it come to right before it's boiling it'll be steaming real heavy but not boiling cut it off cover it up and let it steep and it probably be about 30 minutes add a cup of sugar remove the bags stir it up let it cool down to almost room temperature because once you pour the tea into the SCOBY it has to be almost room temperature or at least 100 degrees or below because if it's anything it's like honey if you pour anything into it hot over about 100 degrees it will kill the benefits and you will actually kill your SCOBY and you're trying to keep it growing you're trying to feed it and keep it growing 
So let's go ahead and get the tea processing and then I'll bring you back when we put it all together. Okay. So our tea is steaming. We're going to go ahead and cut it off and cover it and then just let it sit there for about 30 minutes. So it's been, how long has it been? 40, oh, wow. 30, 45 minutes, something like that. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave the tea bags in there and I'm going to go ahead. This is, I've got a cup of sugar here. We're going to go ahead and pour this in here so it can start dissolving and we'll get it all stirred up and let the tea go ahead and cool down to room temperature and finish steeping. And the reason why you cover tea whenever you steep it is because some of the water soluble properties can evaporate in the steam. And so what you want to do is, is collect that steam that's on top in the lid. This right here. This liquid down here in the bottom is going to have some herbal properties, medicinal properties in it. So let's cover this. All right, this is the next day, and um, we've still got our SCOBY. Now, if you let it sit overnight, you'll start seeing a film start again on your SCOBY, and that's fine. It's just, um, it's making another one. So, we're going to go ahead and drain out our tea. And all we're going to do is just pull these tea bags out. Give them a good squeeze. Then we can throw those away. And while it was warm, you should have already added your one cup of sugar, which I already did yesterday. So now all we're gonna do, I've got a half gallon jar here. And I'll try not to make a mess. Okay. I'm gonna use a measuring cup. This is just for the sake of video. If I wasn't showing you guys how to do this, I would do it in the sink and it would just spill everywhere. So, I know that's not all of it, but we've we filled it up to this top line on the half gallon jar. We've got to have room for our scoby. So, what we need to do is put our scoby in. Okay, go ahead and pour the scoby starter in with it. It may sink, it may float. Some go straight to the bottom. I'm gonna flatten it out though. See if it'll stay flat. There it goes. Okay, so mine's floating to the top. I've got it where it's fairly flat. And I think I'm gonna leave it at that that height, which is about halfway up the, the angle where it goes up to the neck. It's about halfway up there. So, all we've gotta do your sirens. <laughs> All we got to do now is let this sit and ferment. What I like to do, and everybody does this differently, is this right here, since it's a brand new starter, it's probably going to take about two weeks for it to, to really get started. Once you get a, a fermentation established, then it's, it, I usually only flavor it after one week. I let it set for a week and then flavor it. We'll get to that later. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on top. And I'm not going to tighten it down because this is going to create some carbonation. You'll start seeing bubbles. Probably here, you could have seen them as early as a couple of hours. And it has to have some way for the gas to escape. Now, once you, um, never mind. I'll get to that later. I'm not jumping ahead of myself. <laughs> so, here we go. This is a start 
of kombucha. Stick around with me, guys. I'll bring you back probably after a week. So, so this day next week, I will bring you back and say, this is what it looks like. And I'll let you know if mine is ready or not. If not, we'll go another week. And if so, then I will start teaching you guys the next step. And there's not really a good way to know when it's ready. You just have to know when it's getting too far. Um, because once, once it starts smelling like vinegar, it's gone too far. And basically, you have to save a cup out of that and restart a whole new batch. But never throw it all out. Never discard any of it. Because then you'll have to start completely over. And if you have to start completely over and you have no starter, one, you can either buy one from the store. Or two, you'll have to let it ferment for four weeks. Um, you have to make some tea and just let it sit for four weeks and sour and start making the the scoby completely over again. So never throw the whole thing out. Always save about a half a cup to a cup of your starter so you can start over. So there it is. <laughs> Our accident. <laughs> Sometimes your science experiments can be helpful. So, just by accident, we were making apple cider vinegar, got a scoby out of it, so now we're turning it into kombucha. Alright guys, stick around and we will um, follow this and I will show you the different stages that it goes through, the different steps, and we'll be drinking it in no time. So, stick around. Let's see how it turns out. Till next time guys. Bye. I forgot to mention. How do you store this thing? You can store it however you want to. Some people like to keep it in a cool, dark place. Some people just like to watch it and have it sit on the counter. But do watch it because it does like to draw gnats sometimes. Just watch it. You can sit, leave it sitting on the counter. That's what I do. I've got a whole three gallon jug over there. Leave it sitting on the counter. Just throw a towel over it because light sometimes can affect it in hindering the growth of stuff you don't want. <laughs> so you can leave it on the counter, throw a towel over it, and you know, just come over and look at it every day. See what it's doing. Be nosy. You know, get all up in its business. See what it's doing so you can take care of it. Because we don't want it to mold and we don't want it to go bad and we definitely don't want to turn it into vinegar because then it's no longer kombucha. It's, it's vinegar. So yeah, just leave it sit on the counter if you want to or you can put it in the pantry. Just don't forget about it because you'll remember if you leave the lid on and it decides to explode. I'm just kidding. It does happen. So just leave the, the lid tight, uh, lightly sitting on it loose so that the the air can escape as the bubbles start. So, okay, that's all I want to tell you. Just sit it wherever you want to. <laughs> Bye, guys.